Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. We can't let anybody else find out who we are. My eyes are up here. I personally would not advise that strategy. <laughs> 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 Bugs Bunny or Tweety Bird? How to make money in crypto. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, home of the Bitcoin, the largest and greatest crypto community in all the interwebs. My name is Ben. Every day on this channel, I show you how to make money in crypto. If you like money and crypto, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want to go deeper into crypto, make sure to go bitlabacademy.com check it out we got uh beginner courses come to you live every single day at 11 39 a.m eastern standard time one minute closer to actual start time today uh today is friday december the 17th 71 degrees and man i tell you what it is amazing it is amazing to see how bipolar bitcoin b can be in such a short amount of time uh we were like you know what this is going to be a bullish stream and so we got the thumbnail ready and then it got ready to make the title and Bitcoin had dumped and we were like, well, what do we do now? And then we're coming back on and now my trade's back in the green, you know? So you can't, uh, uh, you, you can't spit on hospitality um, as uh, spoken greatly by the dad in Troll 2. Can't spit on hospitality. Also, you have to tighten your belt when you have hunger pains. I would ask. Great uh, film, Troll 2. Who's yeah. seen Troll 2? Amazing movie. Amazing movie. What were you saying? Nothing. Never mind. I'll just leave it alone. <laughs> Wasn't going anywhere good. It was not going anywhere good. No. No, you're going to have to lube it up. Yeah. Okay, so uh, okay, it's amazing how in sync we are. <laughs> Our brains are just to be on such different wavelengths. Yeah. Uh, guys, what is what is on my computer here? Ooh. Who pulled this up? Mm. I did not pull this up. I'll tell you that. Eighty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. I, I tell you what, I should make Crypto Face supply me with a Hamburglar costume. Uh, I will not be wearing this on a live stream. That's just on around the blockchain, right? Yeah. All right, that's the deal. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, Bitcoin acting kind of crazy right now, but guys, we actually have some uh, pretty good news today on what's going on with crypto, on what's going on with the prices. We have some stablecoin news. Uh, we've got some money on exchanges. We've got some positive stuff going on from uh, larger investors. Some good XRP news. AVAX, right? <laughs> Welcome to AVAX Boy Crypto. Yep. Uh, where every day I come on and talk Avalanche because it's such a big winner. Um, and uh, guys, Justin Sun leaves Tron. Wow. I mean, this is, look, I understand like a lot of you guys are newer to crypto and like Tron isn't like this big deal to you and you don't really care probably. Well, he didn't even announce it first. <laughs> The, most of y'all don't even get that. <laughs> but Justin's on leaving Tron. I can't wait to get to that story because that is gigantic. That sends shockwaves through crypto, especially for those of us that have been around. Um, I've actually interviewed Justin Sun, not lately, but um, you know he was he's one of the biggest characters in crypto. So the fact he's going to uh, work for the for the devil, you know, with the, with the WTO, we'll we'll see what happens there. Uh, oh, look, look who's in the chat. Brother is in the chat. <laughs> yes, the Nilbog King. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's check it out. 1.43 million subscribers and get everybody subscribing on the YouTubes. Uh, 724.9 thousand followers. Uh, we have chosen all of our uh, selections for our BitBoy Secret Santa where we're helping families in need. We are actually going, one of them is a local family. We're actually going to go later today. Uh, we gave the families the option to either take the crypto or to take a check um, because we, you know, a lot of these families need the money quickly because Christmas is coming up. So um, today we're going to go deliver this this evening uh, one of these uh, one of these prizes, not pri prizes, wrong word, but uh, this help to these families in need. We're going to go do that. We're going to, uh, you know, uh, maybe put it on Twitter, put the video on Twitter or something like that. It's going to be really exciting. So can't wait to do that. This is what we really love is helping people. So. Mm -hmm. Um, can't wait to do that. Very exciting stuff. Um, and don't forget to follow on Instagram, 391K, uh, 5100 on my personal non-crypto account. And then also we are uh, on TikTok. Don't forget to follow us there. We're going to be doing a lot of content there coming up here pretty soon. Um, all right, let's check this out here. Uh, $2.155 trillion. 
Uh, where was it yesterday? Do you remember? Was it right at two point two trillion? I think. I think it was right there. Yeah, I think it was right. Might there. have been. Yeah, can't remember. The volume was up. Volumes again down today at ninety eight billion dollars. Bitcoin dominance about the same place it was yesterday, forty point seven. ETH down a little bit, twenty one percent. Um, and what we'll see is most likely that's right. Ethereum is down more than Bitcoin right now over the last 24 hours. And another way to tell that without even having to look at those numbers, if Bitcoin dominance is about the same or higher and ETH dominance is lower, then you pretty much know that Bitcoin went up or did not go down as much as Ethereum did. Uh, so it's going to cost you a 47 and a half pair of ways to send an Ethereum transaction. Um, let's see here. Bitcoin 46,467. Is that accurate? No, it's at 47. So actually, none of those numbers we just gave you are correct. Hmm. Oh, I had to refresh the page. We're almost back to 2.2 trillion. 24 hour volume is 100 billion, so $10 billion higher. Bitcoin dominance 0.2% lower and Ethereum 0.2% higher. So you come down here and look, and um, you see it was a 2% difference between what Bitcoin was down compared to Ethereum, and now it's only about a 1%, and you see that reflected in the numbers. I'm just trying to kind of show you guys how the Bitcoin dominance in the prices are kind of, how they are related. They are directly related. Um, you can make general inferences based upon the direction those go in. Uh, Binance Coin down, Solana down, everything's pretty much down. Um, XRP back at about 81 cents, but look at Avalanche and Terra Luna continuing to pump both green weeks. Dogecoin with a green week. Pretty interesting. Might be interesting to look at the week numbers here. You're in finance. We talked about this on Around the Blockchain yesterday. Number 88. It was actually, um, it, it was actually at number 95 yesterday. It just broke back into the top 100. Did you know this wasn't in the top 100 anymore until no, the last couple days? No. How far <clears throat> did it fall? Say it again. How far did it fall out of the top 100? Um, well, let's go look. We can look that up pretty much. Go look. Um, coin market cap historical. Let's go back. What is it now? Let's go back to, let's say, November 21st. Let's look for yearn. Well, it was 97 then. Let me go to the 5th. 99, maybe it managed to stay right in that top 100 the whole time. The 12th, let's look there. 107, mm. 107. That's crazy. I had no idea it was even in the 90s. Yeah. I, I, I was just used to it being like a, like a 40 or a 50, somewhere around there. Just forgot about it. So pretty crazy stuff. Um, okay, so biggest gainers of the day. We got Urine Finance, Bora Bora is continuing to move. AR, Avalanche, Curve, Helium, Terra. That's the week, right? Say it again. That's the biggest gainers of the week. No, this is the day I'm about to move to the week. Okay. About to move to the week. For the week, you're in finance, Avalanche, OKB, which is pretty significant because OKX is an exchange where there's a lot of big whale movements uh, going on. Um, So when that coin is pumping, that could be a good indicator that prices are getting ready to head in a certain direction. We got Bora Bora, Arweave, Helium. Those are all 20% gainers. You got a lot of coins that are up this week. Uh, Solana barely up. Blockstacks, HBAR, Dogecoin, Phantom. EOS of all coins is up. Hmm. What about when EOS falls out of the top 100? That's going to be interesting. Maybe uh, Justin's son is on that same path as Brock Pierce because he went politics too. Uh, Justin's son is not nearly as bad of a person as Brock Pierce. Well, so I, and that's saying a lot. Yeah, I wasn't saying that. I was just interesting that they both led, you know, major projects before that were all in the media, all in the hype that haven't really done anything. Now they're both in politics. Yeah, what, what, where is Tron at these days? Oops. Tron's still in the top 30, isn't it? It's got to be up there. Top, yeah, number 24. 24. So it, it, we'll, we'll get into the Justin Sun stuff in a minute, but. Yeah, I'm not sure, you know, what's going to happen with if it's going to be good or bad for Tron. I would say it's probably going to be good, I would think. Mm -hmm. So, all right. If you guys have any uh, questions for Q&A, drop them in the chat right now. We'll work them in. We got a couple on here. Uh, One of them, Trail Grinder mentioned 
we talked we didn't really talk about this too much maybe you did on around the blockchain of the fact that 90 percent of all bitcoin was mined recently and he was saying do we think that scarcity is going to start kicking in uh what's your take on that do you think it makes a difference now that it's gone just a psychological number or was that all kind of baked in the whole uh time? no i certainly don't think the I, I think what is the most important about the Bitcoin scarcity is the amount of Bitcoin being purchased per day compared to the amount yeah. that's coming into the new supply. Right. And it, it, into the circulating supply. So if, if that number is right now, I think it's about 900 Bitcoin per day. We already know that's a negative. We already know more than 900 Bitcoin per day are being bought. So that pushes up the supply and the demand. Now in the, in the bear market, it, I don't know if those numbers will keep up. I would assume actually the number, the, the amount of buying would go up. You have to remember it, it, for every transaction, you have a buyer and a seller. So you do you have to do have to keep that in mind. But you know, it just what how how much are companies buying Bitcoin? How much are institutions buying Bitcoin? You'd probably make the argument in the bear market, the number, especially at the bottom, the number will go up dramatically. So in in two years, uh, well, two and a half years, when the next halving occurs, you will be looking at about four hundred and fifty Bitcoin being created per day. So I, I think the compound effect of that is so dramatic. You know, I, this you know I got several little stats around this that are so intriguing. But the last Bitcoin cycle occurs in twenty one thirty six through twenty one forty, approximately. It's based on blocks, not years, but approximately during the entire last four year cycle of Bitcoin, there will only be one half of one Bitcoin mined in four years. That is mind blowing. Uh, so yeah, really, really interesting there. Yeah. Um, what are your, any thoughts on meta hero? Um, I don't know if I've ever met one. Uh, it's, it's a solid, uh, metaverse project we, coming up. I mean, I think we, we might have some, I'm not sure. So meta hero. Yeah. I don't ever know. I know we did a sponsored video with them, but we do like, we do like Meta Hero. We like mm -hmm. what they're doing. The the scanning. No, Chris from MM Crypto said he's already been scanned in. Yeah, it's an interesting Meta, Meta Hero. Project. When are you gonna scan me? Yeah. So scan we me. like it. Um, this is an interesting question. If you how many people do we have watching? Uh, we have sixty five forty two. Yeah. Sixty five forty two. Eleven hundred likes. Eleven hundred likes, guys. Go ahead and do us a favor. Make sure to hit that like button. It helps us out. Helps more people to view those videos if you do us a favor and smash that like button hit the subscribe button while you're at it but if you're watching on mobile make sure to x out of the live chat and hit the like button and then come back into the to the live chat if you're watching on um smart tv bottom left hand corner of your screen more actions more options and then hit react and then hit the like button it's the number one thing that helps us to get views and the message of crypto out to the people somebody said is the scanner big enough to scan me <laughs> these people rude it's a holiday you know i put on some holiday wait come on boys uh if you had to pick three coins for a very long-term hold like 2030 and not sell them until that point which three would it be bitcoin ethereum cardano I mean, I don't think there is another choice there, really. Yeah, I was. De I had definitely was going to say Bitcoin, Ethereum. I was thinking about maybe trying to slide in a third pick that was a little bit. Basically, what you're trying to do is pick something that you know is going to still be here. That's all you have to do is make sure it's around still, and you'll be way in the profit most likely. And so that's the thing we don't know. A lot of these things are going to be around. We don't, right. and, and we don't know where the regulation is going to go around exchanges and exchange tokens. Uh, Binance seems to be kind of on its way down while some other stuff is on its way up. Not the value of the coin, but the exchange itself. So it's very, uh, very interesting to see what happens there. I think that, um, you know, I definitely, those are the three I always put up. I mean, Chainlink is another one that I believe is probably a long-term hold. Mm -hmm. uh, XRP, XRP, obviously another long-term hold. You're, people are correct there. Sorry, I didn't say that. Yeah, no brainer. I, I agree. XRP just, for sure. I would say at this point, I would even put XRP in front of Cardano at this point right now. So I would definitely say XRP number three. And then, I mean, look, guys, there's a lot of other ones that people are saying. I mean, yeah, Solana, VeChain, yeah, E-Gold, you know, uh, Polygon. Th these are all projects we like and, and most likely will be around. But yeah. if you were to say, what are the three most solid picks? You know, I'm going Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and then Cardano. Uh, yeah. So Polkadot probably. 
but you know, I, I I've got more faith in the other ones as well. So Cosmos is fine for a long. That but was like, one I was thinking about sliding in there, but like, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. If you're talking 20, which one, Cosmos. I mean, yeah, but it, and you're it, just talking 2030, so you're looking for sure bets, so. sure surefire bets, things that have been around for a long time will see to be a long. And uh, then you know. Simon Van Ham. How long do these downward channels usually last before they break? Um, downward channels. That's what he said. Of Bitcoin. That's what I assume. That's what he's well, referring to. Well, let's move and look at the chart. Yeah. I mean, there you go. Yeah, let's check it out. Because I was looking at something that's not, not the best thing. Now we're gonna look at some pretty bullish stories here in a few minutes. You know, I, I noticed a couple things. Okay, I noticed a couple things on the charts. One thing I noticed is that. I don't know if we've seen a momentum wave this straight in a long time. Like, look how straight that momentum wave is. It, it's like, what that communicates to me is we are on a steady movement right now. Like, I mean, look look back. I can't, there's not a single momentum wave anywhere that I can find on this Bybit chart that looks anything like what we're experiencing right now. And, and it's very interesting when you find stuff on the charts you haven't really seen before this momentum wave down here i mean it's 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 almost a straight line here almost a straight line this here is a very clean down channel here so um it's really hard to say what we're going to have to do to kind of get out of this or if we'll ever get out of it so that was one thing i noticed though is it's very consistent right now and you feel that like you feel that when it's consistent because there's not super volatile movement and people aren't like super scared. They're also not super excited. Like everything is just kind of boring right now at this point. So when you look over here, the thing that's a little concerning to me though, is just how much this looks like this, you know, you have basically a big leg down, here you had, you know, kind of a slower beginning, but then the big leg down. And then you've just got the continuous downward channel here, which is a little more broad than over here. Um, but it does look very similar to what we were seeing at that time. And, you know, I, I, I don't really know where it's going to go from here. I obviously can't tell you. I can't predict the future. Uh, fundamentally and on-chain, and I think that this is, uh, I think that this is something so somebody said relying on green dots. Come on, man. If you don't think these green dots work, you're an idiot. You, you are an absolute idiot. We've gone back. Yeah, let, let's check that out, guys. Let, let, let's check that out. Let's go over the history of this, the 2019, and let's see if these green dots play out. Like, how stupid can you be to say some dumb crap like that? Like, because the last one is not played out exactly to this point? Is, is that what it is? I, I, some of you, some of you who come in here and say idiotic stuff like that because of one instance, you are a loser. You continue to lose. You're the person that says technical analysis and market indicators do not work at all because of one bad experience that you had. And that's kind of the definition of what happens to people in life who we call losers. They always feel like the one time that they try the thing, it doesn't work. The one time they try, it doesn't work. You lost money on one trade because you look so small at the micro moments in life and you, and you take experience from that and you cast it across an entire range of time or experience. That's why you're losers. That, that's the kind of person that will never be successful in life, that will never be successful in trading, will never be successful in anything. Because you're too narrow-minded and short-sighted and idiotic to see what's right in front of you. We've shown this over and over and over again. Yeah, they don't work. Let's let's go back. Let's look at the chart here. Get out of here, Gizmo. Yeah, I hate Gizmo. I love Gizmo. He's so dang cute. I want a Mogwai. Okay. Let, let, let's go look. Let's see if they play out. And this goes specifically to that idiot. Okay? Let's Let's look at these patterns and let's see if they played out. Since December of 2019, aka the entire bull run. Let's check it out and see if it works. Check, check this out. Let's see. Let, let's go to this date. Let's stretch it a little bit. I know y'all like when I do that. Let's stretch it and let's go see if Market Cipher works. What, why don't we go check it out? 
Let, let's go look. Here, first one, boom. 35% gain in a month. Let's go to the second one. Let's go to the second one, okay? The second one and the third one here, they're part of a two dot green, a, a two green dot formation that we've seen several times. Let's, let's see if this one played out. I can't even call you what I want to call you because it's not politically correct anymore. Let's, let's see how those played out. Oh, just a 64% gain over two and a half months, idiot. Two, two and a half months. Let's check it out again. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, this one, this one did not play out. Two, two out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Two out of eleven did not play out. So that one did not. Let's look at the next one, idiot. Let's check it out. Let's see how smart you are. Doesn't work, does it? Let, let's check this out. Boom. 184% gain. Let's go to the next one. Why, why don't we go to the next one? Let, let's see if the next one played out. Let's check it out. Marcus Cypher doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. Green dots, make fun of me for it. Let's check out the next one. Boom. 548% gain. Why don't we go to the next one? Why, why don't we go check out the next one? Let's go. Let's go. Here it is, right here on the chart. You guys see it. Next one. Yeah, yeah c come on, man. Come on, rely on the green dots, you idiot. Let's check out the next one. Here we go. Boom. This one, one of the other ones that did not play out. Did not play out. Two out of 11, I told you, did not play out. Let's check out the next one. See what it did. Only 128% gain. Only 120% gain. This is why you're a loser. This is why you continue to lose. This is why you don't make money in crypto. This is why you come in for three months and then you disappear like the vermin that you are and you don't come back in because you're so idiotic that you can't look at a chart over a two and a half year, year period of time and see how much it works. I get so tired of people that come into this chat and say stupid crap like that. Your parents are disappointed in you, sir, because you haven't done anything with your life. Boom, that's all I got. Sorry, I'm back in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> I get so fired up at these people. They say stuff and they feel like when they come in here that they're saying the smartest thing that has ever been said. The smartest thing. So yeah, so let's look at what's happening right now on the chart. Let's check out what's happening right now. Right now, we have a two green dot formation. Remember what happened the last time? We showed you sure enough, didn't we? It hasn't played out yet. I, I would probably figure that we're gonna see a third green dot at some point. We may get a more action to the downside. But the fact this chart is so consistent. Hey, and I, I saw the people saying I don't know TA. Well, an idiot can see what I saw. An idiot can see what I saw. Th that's not rocket science. If you think you've got to have some kind of degree in technical analysis to be able to read a market indicator and figure out the most likely percentage that something's going to go up or the, or the likely chance something's going to go up or something's going to go down, it's not rocket science. You don't have to have a degree. I don't have a degree in TA. I don't know that much about it. But you know what we do here? We win all the time. We continue to win. Woo-sa. Sorry, I'm fired up today. Fired up. I'm fired up. Yeah, that's right, Crypto Face. Thank you. Crypto Face always have my back and always will. Love that guy. Even though he is going to make me wear a hamburger suit. <laughs> Bitcoin, can you please go to 100,000 in two weeks? Okay. <laughs> But, but here, here's what we're looking at here on the chart, okay? We are seeing the consistent buildup here. Consistent buildup, okay? So the point here is we've been sideways action. down. We've been on a down channel, but it's not a gigantic channel. I mean, we peaked out at 52. We bottomed out. I mean, after the, the ultimate crash, we bottomed out here at 46.9. So it's not like that we're not, you know, it's not like we're making a massive dump right now. We could see a massive dump. And if we see a massive dump, it will probably result in a third green dot. And if you've looked at, let's say, the eight-hour chart or the 12-hour chart or some of those charts, we've seen these formations of the, the three green dots, which is way more powerful. When you see these green dots, that means it's ready to pop. That means it's ready. Well, pop's a bad word. That means it's ready to pop up. It's ready to move. So sometimes what happens is it gets to that point, and then there's one more release of downward action, maybe two more releases and then it pops up, it means it's near a bottom. 
It's near a bottom. That's what this means. So that's what I think we're seeing right now. We're going to look at a ton of stories today uh, that are that are indicating that. Um, let's see. Anxiety. Who's got anxiety? Who's anxious? That's what the story says. Um, so if just to recap there, what you're saying is when you get near a bottom. You won't like me when I'm angry. You're looking Sorry. for a pop-up and then a quick release? Exactly. Okay. Just making exactly. sure we're all on the same page. Exactly. 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 Well, I guess something that might be a little less volatile is uh, stable coins, if we want to talk about they, that. They might be. I yeah. think we're supposed to be doing a sponsored segment right now. We'll do, a, we'll do it later on. Oh. Remind me to come back to it. I don't think it's a proper time to do that. So, yeah, I did. I did pop a blood vessel, I think. Oh. It's, it's just so obvious, though. Like, look at it, guys. Use your brain. That's all you have to do is use your brain. And this is going to sound very uh, hypocritical of me right now. Use your brain, not your heart. <laughs> you <know? laughs> all, guys, all you have to do to be a good trader is control <laughs> your emotions. emotions. You control your emotions. That's all yeah. you have to do. That's all you have to do. It's very simple. <laughs> um, we are doing the uh, Femex trading competition, by the way, which I'm in a winning trade as of this month. No, that's not where I want to go. Let me go to this other one. Oh, Shannon's upset about the Gizmo SmackDown. I'm sorry. It's just because he falls over. I love Mogwais. I love, I, I would buy a Mogwai if, if they were real animals. Um, but right now, as you guys can see, we are currently in third place overall at 51.58%. Um, here we are. You guys can see we're currently uh, only, we're 30% behind the leader right now who are, they're crushing it. Uh, about 20% behind the number two. We're pretty solidly in third place right now. So I've got a green trade right now. I'll be uh, closing up at some point, which hopefully will send us into uh, some higher numbers. What's Bitcoin at right now? 46, no. Bitcoin is at 46.9. Oh, it is at 46.9. 46.9. So I got my trading, I think, at like 47.2. So maybe I'm a little bit down right now. But anyways, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we'll get back over uh 48 and I told you guys we, we would possibly be seeing some volatility as we saw the close to the futures which closed at does anybody know what the futures close at would it, it closed at 40 almost 48 i think mm-hmm. i think it would have closed at about 48 to maybe somewhere around there so setting my back on crack <laughs> no that's my question no uh, as stablecoin issuers were put under the pressure of democratic mm-hmm. witnesses senator pat toomey released his own set of regulation principles. On December 14th, the United States Senate Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs Committee held a hearing titled Stablecoins. How do they work? How are they used? And what are their risks? The testimonies, both spoken and written, focus largely on the last two issues. His anxieties over KYC compliance and the U.S. dollar inflation threat dominated the discussion. Held less than a week after the House of Representatives Financial Services Committee hearing on digital assets, which was generally perceived as constructive, The meeting held by Banking Committee was expected to be tough. Senator Shafrod Brown, a Democrat from Ohio who chairs the committee and had called the hearing, is infamous for his critical stance on crypto. Uh, Shafrod Brown let loose with his opening statement. That's my new favorite nickname. uh, Bringing to life a ghost of the Great Depression. These tokens can crash. The crypto market's diving by almost 30% in one day. History tells us we should be concerned with any investment or when any investment becomes so untethered from reality, look at the 1929 stock market crash. I mean, have these people not seen a crypto cycle? Have they not seen Bitcoin go up and go down? I mean, is, that, is this really like, we're having the same conversations we were having in 2017. And all of those people, by the way, who I talked to during that time that I tried to get into crypto and they said no, they felt real great about that decision over the next few months. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the next... Two years, they felt great about that decision. They all tell you it's a regret at this point. Um, Let's see. Let's see if there's anything real. There's Shafrod Brown. I hate that guy. Report by the PWG called for the introduction of comprehensive oversight as soon as possible. Uh, Janet Fallon Yellen says the group urged Congress to require stablecoin issuers uh, be insured depository institutions. So she basically wants anything that's doing custody to be fully regulated. Um, uh, let's see, Goldstein scathing. Uh, this is from Alex Goldstein. Is that his name? Alexis Goldstein. It's a her. Uh, Director of Financial Policy at 
Open Markets Institute, liberal think tank said a recent report from the World Economic Forum, oh, definitely want to trust them, uh, found the stable coins have no benefit for financial inclusion. That's like that, that's like you go and you uh, interview the CEO of Coke and they're like, we don't think Pepsi has a place in the market. <laughs> you know, like what? Uh, the subject to same or higher barriers as pre-existing financial options, including the need for internet and for smartphones as someone who's played around with sending stable coins but personally, and sort of in my work, it often makes Western Union look cheap when you rack up all the fees that you need. And I mean, that's what we see in bull markets. We see things go up, uh, but, but we do know that these, um, uh, we, we do know that stable coins are under attack and they will continue to be under attack. There's no doubt about it. Stable coins are going to go, uh, stable coins are not gonna go the way of the dinosaur. But I believe stablecoin staking. That's what this is all about. This is all about stablecoin staking. They compete with banks. You see someone working with the World Economic Forum coming out and saying, well, you know, we don't think stablecoins have a place in the ecosystem, you know? Always look at what they are, you know, always look at what they're doing, not what they're saying. Bitcoin traders ready to buy his tether supply on exchanges hits $9 billion. Latest analytics data shows that buying power of traders is accumulating on exchanges, rising to a new high. Um, according to the, San, to the Santima analytics team, concentration of Tether stable coins on centralized crypto trading venues has reached a half-year high. That's 22.5% or $8.99 billion if converted into fiat. This high accumulation of stable coins on exchanges is indicative of traders, of traders buying power rising, analysts from sentiment believe. Uh, Sandman has so many great charts, you know. The ratio of Tether stablecoins on exchanges has risen at 22.5%, which is the highest level in over six months. This amount of supply converts to $8.99 billion, indicating a rising level of buying power accumulating on exchanges. Uh, so this is big. Basically, you got all this money sitting over in stablecoins. Now, I, I want you to think about this. I, I want you to think about the place we're at in the market. Why would all these people be moving stuff over to stable coins? Well, it's for either one of two reasons. Either you believe that there's about to be a massive drop and you don't want to lose value, or it's because there is a lot of upside and you're, you're waiting for the market to stabilize to buy maybe not all Bitcoin. Maybe you're waiting to buy some altcoins that are ready to pump. So it is kind of, a, you know, in poker, they call it a polarized range. I mean, it's definitely a polarizing thing. But the vast majority of times that we've seen this amount of stable coins available, it has been bullish. So there's definitely an argument to say, you know, that people would might be moving out right now. But I don't think that's what we're seeing because there's so much questioning in the market on what's going on. Um, I think most people believe that we are going to at least see one more top or we're going to see one more move up. I mean... I, like somebody asked me, I did a Twitter Spaces with uh, Layla Main of um, Business Insider yesterday it was, and she asked me, you know, she said, you know, what are the chances? What do you think the chances are that we're not, that we're still in a bull market and we'll see higher highs? And like she pinned me down on a number and I think 85%, you know, I think it's about 85%. That would be the number I put on it. What about you, TJ? That we're still in a bullish cycle. We're going to see a higher high in the, you know, mid to near term future basically yeah uh yeah i would say 85 i mean i would my gut my first thought was 75 percent. so it's a little lower than what you were saying but similar range similar range i heard you were a yes man who said that i don't know somebody sent me a message and they said they said tj is just a yes man you need to be surrounded with people that don't agree with everything you think I might be the only non yes man. I'm the probably the farthest He's from the, the knowest yes man. man I know. <laughs> yeah. I promise. That's why that's why we're always arguing and fighting. Um but but in general we do have the same outlook on where we think things are going and the, mm -hmm. and the you know the general idea of the market we do, we do agree on that. Um so yeah, people people are really scared to talk about green dots now. <laughs> yeah. Uh so you know, I just see these comments over and over again. It just one would just trigger me, you know. All right, uh, Bitcoin miners to exchange low. Previous five-year low was observed on November 19th. More whales are buying up. And I think this is also the important part that really makes that, that really makes it feel like 
that we are, um, it really makes it feel like this is bullish and not bearish. So more data from Sandman has recently shown the large BTC holders known as whales, thank you for that clarification, you dot today, have been adding more of the flagship cryptocurrency to their holdings, according to figures shared by the analytics agency. The number of whale addresses that store 100 to 1,000 Bitcoin is soared by 193 wallets, compared to only nine, or 2.5 months ago. Sandman team believes is a good sign that may show the upcoming growth of the Bitcoin price. Uh, it's up 153%. What, what do you think is uh, going to be happening? What, what do you think is going to be happening when we uh, get to a place where Bitcoin, the year over year price of Bitcoin was higher? Is this so amazing to think at this point that we are already, that we're already like to the end of the year. Like we're back to January in a couple of weeks. Crazy. That yeah, was so fun back then. Yeah. It is fun when you look at it. You know, I think we did a tweet the other day that said the Bitcoin price on this day. I don't know where it started. I think it was like 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, you know, and then today, obviously. And it is interesting to look at, you know, it's generally moving up. There was one or two years where, you, you know, you get the bear market and it's about the same price as it was the year before. But it is always generally moving up. And then there's those certain years where you get that 3,000 to 14,000 kind of jump, you know, just crazy numbers. So, you know, it's it will be interesting as we take over to the end of the year this year and we, you know, at wherever we're at, 48, yeah. 50, you know, hopefully we get a pump before then. But, you know, that's going to be well up at where we were January last year. And then, like you said, it's a whole nother reset for charts and people that look at all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it'll be it'll be good. And that's. Yeah. That's the one thing I always try to remind people you do too all the time. It's not necessarily about timing the market exactly, nailing the exact top or the exact bottom. It's spending time in the market and yeah. really just surviving and staying alive and accumulating over time. And if you keep building up your crypto stack, generally your crypto stack is going to be worth more dollars or whatever your local currency is in the future. Uh, somebody figured out that when I'm looking here, I'm reading the comments. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, so when you see me looking right here, I'm looking at the comments. When you well, see me looking here, I'm looking at myself, which yeah. is, you guys know, my favorite thing to look at. You make a special, a little, you can tell when you're reading a little That's more it. intently. Yeah, you you kind of squint a well, little Well, a lot of people are in this chat talking about, uh, by the way, I saw somebody saying something about red dots. The red dots on the, uh, the red dots on the momentum waves. They're not as they're not as bearish. Just like the regular green dots on the momentum waves are not as bullish. The two things that I really look for that are like, okay, this is generally a great indicator where it's going. The large green dots that pop up on the deep momentum waves and the blood diamonds that pop up on market cyber eight. Those are kind of your two symbols when you trade those over a longer period of time. Outside of like the one or the five minute chart, I don't mess with that. Uh, the the hour, the two hour, the four hour, you know, the, that's what to look for. So a lot of people in the chat not happy about what I said about Meta Hero. What did I say about Meta Hero? What yeah. I, they said I was looking down on Meta Hero. I didn't say that. Yeah. I just said Meta Hero. When are y'all gonna scan me? That's all I said. We like yeah, we Meta like Hero. it. Yeah, yeah. Like we're not. Said, we're pretty we're, sure we're investing. One of our in top five, you know, uh, Metaverse projects. Metaverse so. projects we like. So yeah, nothing. Only didn't mean any shade to them. Any stretch of imagination. Uh, all right, so Ray Dalio suggests Bitcoin's merit has been fueled by millennial interest. Can you move over the left? Uh, this way? No, no, no. The sometimes Here? you over zoom the uh, Here? Here? article. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, this. Yeah. Oh. Like the headline was cut off. Oh, the headline was cut off. Let's see. But it's good. I don't like the left sidebar that Decrypt has. Yeah. All right, here we go. And you know what else I don't like? I don't like. Uh, I think it's. I think it's Coin Telegraph. Coin Telegraph has this thing where on the iPad, if you if you, I don't even know what it is, maybe somebody in the chat will know. And you move on to the next thing on the mm -hmm. uh, bar there. But if I accidentally like touch it a certain way with two finger, I, I don't know exactly what it is. It will get rid of the header, and it's just the article and the title, and I can't ever figure out how to get back to the header because that's how I go home. You know, to the home page, I just click Coin Telegraph to look at the new stories. I can't figure out what I've done. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever done that? No, I don't it, even have you ever, it. It goes into like read-only mode. Mm. I don't know what, it's the only site that I regularly visit that does it. But Ray Dalio, billionaire hedge fund manager and founder of Bridgewater Associates, has said that Bitcoin has some merit in a recent interview with MarketWatch. Mm. Bitcoin has some merit. This is a gigantic story, people. 
I'm not an expert on Bitcoin, but I think it has some merit as a small portion of a portfolio. Dalio said, previously said in May, he owns some Bitcoin. He also iterated a common talking point among Bitcoiners. It's almost a younger generation's alternative to gold and it has no intrinsic value, but it has imputed value and it therefore has some merit. Um, and, and to go along with this, because you know he was talking about the uh, millennial stuff, it's very interesting. New survey reveals 83% of millennial millionaires now own crypto. Generational gap in investment could create issues for wealth managers, says president of CNBC's survey partner Spectrum. And I, you know, I've been telling you guys for a long time that, you know, the newer generation is, is we're doing all the groundwork in crypto. We're laying out all the groundwork for um, you know, education and, and teaching people about this new technology and, and, and the investment opportunities that exist within it and the stories of people and the experiences on how they've done really well with crypto and change their lives and things like that. Uh, we're laying the groundwork for the true adoption that comes, much, you know, a lot of these people are like very quick to say, you know, uh, mainstream adoption's here and that's why we won't have a bear market. And Guys, we're so far away from this being mainstream adoption right when you first get into crypto you're real excited about it you feel like it's right around the corner i know when i was in you know in 2017 yeah. when i was like really you know the bull run was going i was like god everybody's gonna be using crypto in six months you know and it's like <laughs> look where we're at now like yeah. we're way beyond where we were but we're still so far away from where we're gonna be but the newer generation is more quickly moving to this the stock market is a dead man walking when you compare the stock market to crypto, it's not even close. Older generations are more risk averse, okay? that They've already made money, especially if they're already investors. They pretty much have portfolios. They have stuff they like to trade in. They have stuff they like. A 5% gain is great for them. Younger generation is less risk averse. Now, why? Well, it just makes perfect sense. If you think about it, inflation, standard of living, these things have skyrocketed you know what has not skyrocketed hey when you look at, and i'm certainly not wait uh, hey hasn't skyrocketed pay has not skyrocketed hey right like if you look at average salaries yeah. um you know over the last 50 years inflation and the standard of living and average home prices have far surpassed that's why you know early on in the 40s let's say early on like that's early in the universe but in the 40s and 50s you know people could actually have a dad that worked they could own a home the mom stay home and they live a fine life mm -hmm. you know that's not the case anymore unless it you're unless the dad's got a fantastic job that's not the way most people are living and that's because of inflation and the standard of living and home prices have gone up so high yeah. right so yeah. what has that led to that's led to a younger generation that looks and says i'm never going to get ahead doing the status quo I'm never going to get ahead with a two or a 5% gain. I need a big move. A lot of these people are swinging for the fences. And these millennial millionaire numbers, they back that up. And when millennials and Gen Zers start realizing that their peers are getting rich with crypto, they're not getting rich with the stock market. Now, you've got your meme stocks, but your meme stocks have made so much money for people. That's kind of an extension of crypto. Like, that's not even... That's not real. You're not investing in the value of a company, okay? You did not invest in the value of AMC and think AMC is going to be a, a beacon of entertainment in five years from now, right? That's why you call it a meme stock because you invested in it only because you saw the money potential. You had no idea the value of the actual company, okay? That's kind of in crypto a lot because it's more speculative here. So it makes sense that these people are more willing to jump over and people are not going to be super excited about putting money into uh, you know stocks in the future that have small gains and small returns, um, we might have a gigantic stock bear market in the, in stocks, and that could be a great time to pick some stuff up. But stocks are a dead man walking compared to crypto. I believe we want to talk about mainstream adoption. <clears throat> I don't know why my throat's so sore today. Maybe because you're just yelling at the beginning of the stream. No, no, it was sore this morning. Oh. So, so you know the thing is, is when you look at the stock market and when you look at crypto eventually the stock market is becoming tokenized and fractionalized and it's going to be moving over to blockchain that's mainstream adoption is that 25 30 40 50 years away maybe from that 
Yeah. And if you go to the the website uh, WTF happened in 1971.com that actually yeah. tells this story perfectly like almost everything you just said there's a chart there for it for productivity versus compensation you can scroll for, further down it shows a chart of yeah like we've shown this before Here husband you know husband only working you know dropping from the 70s at 38 percent all the way to as low as it looks like 20 ish percent in the 90s it's pretty interesting um pretty interesting website yeah you can show it real quick yeah there you go yeah so it's got all kind look look at that there it is right there you know the yep. compensation and wages has not really moved compared to other stuff um you look at the real gdp per capita and then look at the real median wages yep. guys you're being scammed you know that's why like i always knew that having a regular job where you just working nine to five and you're working for somebody else unless you get really lucky and end up with a really great career or the uh, the perfect place to work you're not going to get ahead that way. You're going to, you've got to do other stuff. And that's why people are coming into crypto because the, people are starting to wake up and see this, that they're going to be living paycheck to paycheck for their whole life. And they're going to be getting social security. That's not going to be there by the time they age out of the, you know, and get in the system. They're always raising the age for, for, you know, social security. Is that because the, the, uh, age of average death is going up. It goes up very incrementally. Yeah. no that's not why it's because they're running out of money so yeah a lot of interesting stuff going on there so that's a, that, that's a whole different video for a whole other day justin sun steps into politics becomes wto ambassador for granada wow wow justin sun is undoubtedly one of the most popular figures in the field of crypto he's best known for founding one of the leading projects tron however it appears that the young entrepreneur is also getting political we're into a press release shared with crypto potato the ministry of foreign affairs of granada is appointed is appointed justin sun as its new ambassador for the world trade organization sun's operations will take place from geneva he's always getting into politics this is extremely strange where's where's the x for me to x out of this thing there it is okay Let's see. He said, it is truly an honor to serve as the WTO ambassador for Granada. I look forward to the opportunity to represent Granada and work with WTO leadership. Uh, it's also worth noting that Sun might also step down from handling the day-to-day -day operations at Tron Foundation. I, I read an article that said he is stepping down. Yeah, I did too. Let me find that one real quick because I want to make sure we get the right one here. President Sun leaving Tron. I said Ron. I don't know why he left, Ron. He was a great guy. Here it is. Yahoo Finance. This article right here says Justin Sun quits Tron to become WTO ambassador for Granada. If you can look at this photo and not know exactly what this is from, that was one of his I'm Alive pictures, if you guys remember correctly. Um, Justin Sun has announced he's stepping down from his role. He said it'd be an honor. Yeah, so he has announced he is stepping down from Tron. So, I mean, has this, I don't really care about what's going on with the WTO. That means nothing to me. I'm much more concerned about what's going on with Tron going forward. I, I tell you, when Tron first started, they plagiarized the, the part, it was a section. They plagiarized a section of the Ethereum white paper, okay? And it was in Mandarin. So anybody that tells you that they, they can tell you what it said, they, they most likely can't unless they're Chinese or no Mandarin. So it's so funny, like all these people caught, you know, getting on for plagiarizing, they couldn't even tell you what was said, but they plagiarized a section of it. And, you know, Justice Hunt eventually came out and said like, well, you know what? We're moving on from this. We're just not talking about it anymore. So if you take that one exception out of the white paper, it is very, you know, well, if you take it all into consideration, Tron was set up to be very similar to Ethereum. And I had so much hope for Tron as a DPoS system, a delegated proof of stake. It's based on nodes and staking, and you get to choose, a dele you can delegate your Tron to choose which nodes you want to be. I think they call them super representatives, I believe is what they call them. I think there's 21 of them, if I remember correctly. Um, I haven't been in Tron in a long time. But it was a great system. Quick Q&A, will this affect Tron's giving next year? Transgiving has been dead for a few years now. So there was oh. only one annual Transgiving that was all that we had. That was a happy time. 
it was you no know, it was an awful time <laughs> it was awful tron was going up at that time but yeah. the reason why i liked tron at that time was because number one it was faster than ethereum the fees were lower than ethereum which we've seen a lot of this rear its ugly head recently right but the thing was is that the system they set up for governance it was it was great but the problem is is what you, you come to find out is the deep dark kind of area air areas kind of areas of crypto which is you had all of these nodes that were pretending to be separate that were all actually being controlled by the same people that were directly at the top of tron and then you started learning about some of their um uh the people that worked at tron uh i can't remember the guy's name roy i think is a guy that worked there and he was involved in like this crazy rug pull and all or i don't know if it's a rug pull it was a scam for sure a ponzi scheme there were a lot of these tron daps that were wrapped up into all this and it was kind of like this big giant circle of evil that was going on over with tron and you know now the justin son he was the head of that snake and now that he's gone and he's moving on we're either going to see one of two things we're going to see somebody come in and clean this up and fix a lot of the damage that justin son had done to tron or we're going to see justin son step down in name only and have one of his people take over and still really be in control and keep that uh, uh keep the vicious cycle that is tron going on the same way so i'm hopeful i always tend to be a little more optimistic as you guys probably know um i, I tend to hope or i do hope that it goes in that direction and maybe this can be a, a rebirth for tron and it can get up there when we talk about the top smart contract platforms tron is not mentioned nope tron is not mentioned at all and there's a reason for that uh it's because of the leadership so when you change leaders you may be able to see it going a different direction so i mean are you generally excited or you know um do, do you think this is a good or a bad thing for tron uh, i think it's a good thing i still think they have a potential you know with the play to earn being in gaming being kind of what's setting up to be another uh kind of the next big wave in crypto yeah. that was the way they were trying to position themselves like but I mean, specifically, Justin Sun had a lot of gaming background, but they were trying to be, you know, a blockchain. They were trying to do it all, really, but they wanted gaming and play to earn games and stuff on there. And I think they still have an opportunity to capture that. You know, there was BitTorrent. Obviously, they yeah. own that. One of the play to earn games I was looking at the other day was run on BitTorrent. So there's still some technical opportunities and marketing opportunity and market share opportunities. It's just kind of like you said, a matter of if they're really trying to build the project to be what's best for its users and society going forward, or are they trying to use it to better themselves? So yeah. if, if that direction changes, there's still opportunity there, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's the way I look at it as well. And uh, the, the tech at Tron is not bad. It's not bad. A lot of people would tell you it is just because they don't know about what's going on with the inner workings of it. It's the governance that turned out to be a big part of the problem. So we'll we'll see what happens. But it, it is this truly is a monumental day uh, for those of us that have been in for a long time. The Justin Sun, one of the biggest names in crypto, is, is moving out of crypto and into something else. So moving into politics. So this will definitely be a changing of the guard and hopefully a good day. Bitwise launches NFT index fund for accredited investors. Accredited investors can now invest in some of the world's most valuable non-fungible tokens in our collections through the Bitwise Blue Chip NFT index fund. Crypto firm stated that the Bitwise Blue Chip NFT index fund is now available to qualified investors for private placement subscriptions. Minimum investment is set at $25,000. While speaking on this new development, Bitwise CIO Matt Holgan stated that new frontiers in the art are rare. Entirely new artistic mediums are even rarer, with enormous potential for meaning, value, and use in our increasingly digital world. So, Bitwise launched several new crypto products in 2021 to satisfy the increasing demand. Um, they announced the debut of uh, the Crypto Industry Innovators Exchange Traded Fund, or the ETF, in May of 2021. <clears throat> now, um, I, I think that's Bit W on the stock market, I believe, um, but. The thing is, is that, uh, you know, my wife was telling me, she was at the gym the other day, and they were talking about a bit W on CNBC. Huh. So pretty interesting. I mean, we know, we, they talk crypto on CNBC, but, mm -hmm. you know, still interested, you know, interesting to see my wife see that and, and recognize it, notice that they were 
doing it on there. So in July, major American institutional investors contributed $70 million to the crypto index fund manager, ordered to beef up its balance sheet and double the size of its staff. So there you go, Bitwise launching an NFT index fund. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, next one. Somebody talking about Nancy Pelosi over there? Yeah, they were talking about... I just um, saw greatest investor of all time, and I knew that's yeah. who they were talking about. That's yeah. hilarious. What were they saying? Nothing really. I, you know, they were talking about people you can't <clears throat> trust, Jags ownership being terrible. I don't know where Nancy Pelosi. Oh, uh, Urban Meyer fired. Yeah. Urban Meyer fired. Very interesting. He was not going to survive that. May stretch the imagination. When the media turns against you in sports, you have got a tough road to home. Tough road to hoe. Hmm. Yeah. That's tough a, road to hoe. That's a phrase. Tough road to hoe? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I, I think so. It. Never heard that phrase. I'm yeah. sure it is. I just never heard it. It's interesting. Yeah. I don't know. There's Peachtree Street. I don't know. <laughs> Sologenic said to airdrop 1 billion XRP holders with a launch of a decentralized NFT marketplace. On November 11th of 2021, the Sologenic Development Foundation, and if you're in the XRP army, make sure you like this video. If you guys like it when we have XRP news, make sure to like this video for us. Um, how many likes do we have? Uh, we only have 3,400 people sleepy today. People are sleepy. What is going on? People hate crypto today. Uh, people are traveling probably. Why would they be know. traveling today? Christmas lot, isn't for nine days. No, but some a lot of people go, like if you're going to be going to spend the week of Christmas with your family, you go the weekend before. You oh, go. they're saying it's a tough road to, to, it's a tough road to hoe, not a tough road to hoe. But wouldn't it make sense? I mean, back in the day when they have to, no, that, before, before we had, you know, machinery, they'd have to hoe the roads, right? This, this makes a lot more sense. Because well, that's, you think plowing a field, you plow all the roads. <clears throat> well, it does make more sense. You're correct. I'm just, you can logically see like early in the day where these phrases came from, you would think that, you know, you, you would hoe a road as well, right? Maybe. How else would you break up the land to put a dirt road? Yeah. You got to hoe it. Plow it. Yeah. Plow it, hoe it. I mean, isn't a plow just a glorified hoe? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we should, I think we should so. put We should put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like it. Okay. All right. Uh, an, uh, an amount of 200 million solo will be unlocked as part of an airdrop to the XRP and or solo holders around the world. Snapshot is scheduled to be taken on December 24th um, from all the XRP and or solo wallets have created a trust line with the Sologenic Oracle. Users can simply hold their assets on centralized exchanges. They're now supporting the airdrop um, or create a trust line directly from their own private wallets to claim it so you guys can get some Sologenics. <clears throat> Here we go. Some more news. Now, this is very fascinating for XRP. <laughs> UN registered securities exchange to develop carbon solutions on XRP ledger. A lot of people were talking about uh, EWT and their work with this, but isn't EWT connected to XRP also somehow? I'm not I sure. If I remember correctly, maybe they're not at all, but I think there's some kind of connection between EWT and um, XRP. I think we did a video on it, but I could be getting stuff confused. The we, we've done a lot, a lot of videos. You know how many videos we've done on this channel? No, how many? But we broke 2,500 last week. Wow. it's a lot of videos. That's so many. That's uploads? <clears throat> yeah. So that means that doesn't count the live streams? I'm not sure. Wow. It says uploads on the actual thing, so it, I would assume it doesn't. But Dang. maybe since they convert kind of over to uploads mm. after mm. they're live, maybe. I don't know. There's still a lot of videos. The latest update in XRP's Ledger's development saw Ripple announce its exclusive partnership with Zange, a sustainably run United Nations registered securities exchange. Zange, or Xange, I don't know how I'm supposed to say this, aims to develop a carbon credit solution on the carbon neutral XRP Ledger or XRPL. <clears throat> Ripple tweeted this out. Zange.com is bringing, let's see, how many followers do they have? I wonder. Like, how big is this company? 902 followers. So they are really making big moves. Uh, but obviously, I mean, just because they don't have a strong Twitter doesn't mean they're not a big company. Uh, one of the first major carbon neutral blockchains, read more about why they chose XRPL. Zange's carbon credit solution on XRP Ledger will further lead to the issuance of tokenized carbon credits following the guidelines set by the top industry working groups, including the Interwork Alliance, Global Blockchain Business Council Initiative, 
and the task force on scaling voluntary carbon markets. That is a lot of initials. Mm -hmm. Specifically, IWA's token taxonomy framework, which is used to define token standards, together with its inner work framework that is used for smart contract standards, will serve as the foundation for the xange.com carbon credit solution. Uh, XRP Ledger's energy efficient operations. We know a pretty good about that. Um, this is not the first time XRP Ledger's sustainable attributes contributed to in its favor. Earlier this year, by the end of third quarter, Ripple announced its $250 million creator fund to facilitate creators explore new use cases for NFTs on the XRP Ledger. Given the environmental friendly attributes of XRPL, it was marketed as a sustainable way to mint, buy, and transfer billions of NFTs. Tease. So there we go. Big news with XRP uh, coming. So somebody said XRP yawn. Don't get me started on yawns. I already talked about green dots. Um. Okay. Last story of the day. Avalanche. Hey. Welcome good. to the Avalanche. That's why the the set is red because Avalanche uh, is pumping. Avalanche logo red. If you didn't know. Get an Avalanche pillow. Jasmine, make me a pillow. Where you at, Jasmine? Where you at? We got it. They. There are. We got to get that up, polka dot pillow fix. Yeah, They're we all do, over for it. sure. We need new pillows. Yeah. Let's see here. Av AVAX touched the support at $78 before starting a significant rally after Circle announced AVAX as the next network on which USDC can transact. The news took the crypto above the resistance at $100, which now acts as support. Next key level is $121. There's some good technical indicators here for uh, AVAX. And they're oh. back to the hamburger. Hamburger. Oh. What were you going to say? You're cutting off that left side again. There we go. Man, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. It's hard. But Avalanche is definitely a project to uh, continue to pay attention to. And we've been giving you a lot of the fundamental reasons why we think this one is going to continue to move. Um, you know, it's got a big funding behind it. It's got strong development. Technicals are strong. Uh, this DeFi is coming. We've got a lot of these DAOs, a lot of great projects that are on it. Uh, Wonderland, uh, also Olympus Dow, and there's another one. I think you know what they call their their people Frog Nation. I think I have no idea. Wait, yeah, they do. That's funny. They do. They do. Uh, Shannon wants to know why didn't we talk about the company Christmas party? Oh, oh yeah. Christmas party was great. Christmas party was awesome. How many people do you think were there? Eighty? <sighs> I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, the room was packed. The room was packed. How many? Was Everybody around, came. How many were around each table? Five or six? Chairs. Six. Six. So what we had Yeah. Eight, somewhere between table, sixty and eighty. Yeah. Somewhere around there. So we had That's families. Something. We gave gifts to the spouses. We gave gifts to the kids. Everybody who had kids. We gave yep. their kids some cool hoverboards. Um and some other stuff. Employees got a nice little surprise as well. So yeah. Had really yeah, good food. Christmas bonus. You, know, you gotta give yeah. them a Christmas bonus. Charcuterie and what do we have? Steak and tacos. Prime and rib. Prime rib. Yeah. No, Chicken. Really amazing. Yeah, Holly is uh, our office manager. She she such knocked a it out of the great park. job. Yeah, such a great job playing this party. So, um, I, I I told I told him right before, um, you know, we 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 handed out our little gifts for our employees. You know, I said, I want you to thank Holly, and I want you to close your eyes and picture what this would have looked like <laughs> if TJ and I were in charge of the party. Yeah, it would have basically been a bunch of chairs and maybe hot pockets if we were. We probably really would have been good. back at another restaurant. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, guys, I did want to mention we do have a uh, sponsored segment here. Is it on here? I don't see it. I may have to do it Monday because I do not see it. It's not pulled up, I don't think. Let's see if I can find it real quick. I don't think it's on here. I don't have the link pulled up, so we'll have to do it next week. Well, guys, that's all we got for today. I don't got fired up today, but you know what? It's a good day to get fired up. It's a Friday. Fired up Friday. Then maybe that's what we'll call it from now on. Yeah. They said the show was like Bitcoin, a little all over the place, but still awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, we will uh, be, but yes, there were Christmas bonuses. Somebody asked, of course we get, you got to be kidding me. Even if it was a terrible year, we get Christmas bonuses. It's what a good company does. They uh, respect their people. You know, they create a family environment and uh, they try to love everybody. So that's what we try to do. What's that? I was just laughing at, I was just laughing at one of these comments. <laughs> oh. I see that. All right, guys. That is all we got for today. Uh, I'll be on Around the Blockchain later today. Be back uh, Monday. You guys, get your Christmas shopping done this weekend. That's all I got. Be blessed. Big boy out.